Hey guys, it's Mr. Crayfish and welcome to the second part of the vending machine tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to finish the machine off and what we've got left to do is handle the button presses so we cycle through the items and then we also need to detect if there's the emeralds in the hopper here. If it matches the price then let's go ahead and give the player the item. So let's go ahead and let's start by handling the button presses here. So what we need to do is get a command block, so command block here. Then what we're going to be doing is actually testing for the button here if it's pressed. So let's create a thing at the back here. Now you want to make sure it's not too close to this because we're going to be having kind of a, uh, a line of command blocks here. So what we're going to be doing is testing for this um, button here. So let's just go ahead and look at it and let's start um, typing the command in. So forward slash test for test for block at this coordinate here. So tab three times. Then the type of block we're testing for. So stone uh, button. Then we need to uh, test for a specific state. Uh, and that is going to be pressed equals true. So if we just go ahead and copy that and then we just test that right now, as you can see it is um, false. But if we go ahead and run that while it's, is that? Oh, oopsie, it's not pressed, it's powered. Kind of silly. But if we test that now while the button is pressed, as you can see, um, it says successfully found the block at that coordinate. So we're going to pop that into this block here. We're going to change it to a repeat and always active. So if we actually find one of these buttons, or if we actually find this button, what we're going to do is set it back to its unpressed state. Now we need, we need to take in consideration of the facing with this unfortunately. So what we need to do is after this create a chain block which is conditional always active then we're going to do come back over here look at that and then we're going to do set block at that coordinate stone button then we're going to do facing equals west. We're looking at over here on the top right where it says Minecraft stone button facing west and then power to false. We want to make we want to basically set it back to that state. So facing equals west and powered equals false. So copy that there. Um, it's already the block, so it can't be changed. But if we pop it into here, so if we actually press this button now. As you can see, it just basically pops out straight away and doesn't um, stay on. So now that we know that a button has successfully been clicked, we can go ahead and we can actually um, start. Oh, actually, we'll do the um, other um, button here real quickly. So we're going to copy this, so pick the block, um, but also hold control as well. So we get the MBT data. And then we know that the coordinate is just two blocks over in the positive Z direction. So we can just update this to um, this Z coordinate here to 505. And then same for this chain block, make sure it's conditional. And then just update that there. And then that should also be the same for this one here now. So now that's done, what we've got to do is over here on our item array, what we're going to do is at the ends of each of the um, pressure plates here, we're going to be placing two stone blocks. Now it can be any block, but I'm just going to be using stone. These just let us know that we're pretty much at the end of the array of the items or the start of the item. So if we actually got to the end here, we need to teleport the armor stand back to the start here. If we get to this side, then we're going to teleport over to here. So on top of this first um, pressure plate here, we're going to do summon armor stand at those coordinates, then give it a custom name, 
and we're just going to call this item underscore selector and then just spawn that right there now each time we press one of these buttons here we've actually going to move this armor stand to the right or to the left so for this um, one here we're going to move this armor stand uh, to the right here so that is the positive Z direction so what we're going to do is this one here is handling that right button so uh, straight after here we're going to have another com uh, chain command block um, conditional and always active then what we're going to do here is teleport at entity type equals armor underscore stand and then the name equals item underscore selector then we know that we need to teleport at one block in the Z direction so we'll do the coordinates of the actual armor stand but on the Z one here we're just going to put one there then you notice every time we press this button here the armor stand has been moved one block over and you'll notice also that the uh, item here has changed now we need to detect as I mentioned before if we actually reach the end here because obviously if we press this button one more time here the armor stand is now inside of this block here so what we do straight after this block here is again another chain we can just make it conditional again what we want to do is inside here we're going to do at execute at entity then the type is going to be armor stand the name is going to be the our selector here so item selector then we're just going to do the coordinates of the armor stand we want to run the command test for block and then we're going to be testing at the coordinates again of the armor stand and then specifically minecraft stone so if it finds a block there then what we're going to do is teleport it to this here so uh, we'll get um, this command out here so we don't have to retype it and then we're going to look at this first pressure plate here so once you get to the end here we need to teleport back to the first pressure plate so look at this first pressure plate pop in the corner that's here uh, we have to bring up this so we're looking at the block negative 603 66 501 copy that and then we're going to put another um, command block here Ch uh, conditional make sure it's always active as well and then pop in that command there that we just typed and then you notice now if we actually hold up I'll just put a block there for now actually what we'll do is hmm because we don't want that to be there just place a block to the right there for now and then if we press that here now it should go back to the start there so as you notice when we just keep pressing this now it keeps cycling through all the items now we need to handle in the other direction so we're going to go ahead and again uh, what's this uh, whoops trying to get off this stuff uh, this one here is the teleport so we're going to pick block that pop that there and then instead this time we need to do in the opposite direction so it would be negative one here instead and we just had a little bit of a mistake there hold up let's just keep move it back into the array and then we need a handle when this goes into this block here so let's detect that test for block if it is minecraft stone make that conditional here uh, copy that there make that conditional and then we need to change these coordinates here 
So copy that command. Look at this uh, last pressure plate. And then update those coordinates. So that is uh, 503 instead of uh, 501. Pop that there. And if we go ahead and we press this button here to go to the left, it should go to that last pressure plate. So now we have basically um, can cycle through the vending machine in any direction that we want now. Now the last part is handling the payment. So whenever we throw in, uh, for instance, for this apple here, two emeralds into this hopper here, we need to make it so it um, detects the emerald in the hopper there and then gives us our item. So we're going to need a re repeating command block here. What we're going to do is in that command block there, we've actually got to do an execute command. Now, what we're executing is a test for blocks command. So we're going to be comparing this hopper here to the hoppers above here. Now, how we actually get the coordinates of these is uh, we're making it, we're test, we're using the execute command so we can make it relative to this armor stand here. So this hopper here relative to the armor stand is, uh, well, this is the positive x direction is two blocks in the x direction and one up on the y direction. So what we're going to do is let's start this off now. So we'll go ahead, test for blocks, and then we're going to pop in the coordinate of this hopper here. So make sure you look at it and then we need to do it again. So do it twice. And then what we're going to do is in here, we're going to do an execute command, execute at entity type equals armor stand, and then a name equals item selector. Then we're going to execute it at the cords of the um, armor stand, and then the command is the test for blocks we just wrote there, and then um, relative, the hopper relative, as I mentioned before, um, in this instance is um, two blocks in the x direction and then one up. And then let's do that again. This might be different for yours, so it might be two blocks um, in the z direction, it might be negative two blocks. Um, just make sure you do it, um, you fix up the coordinates properly. So there we go. Uh, that should be it for that and we can test that out real quickly just to make sure that it is actually working so we we'll just put a hot, uh, comparator there for now then let's pop in two emeralds and is that working oh make sure you press always active and then as you can see the hot the comparator is now uh, lit up there what we've got to do now is reset this hopper here so it's going to be a simple set block command here so look at the hopper then do set block get the coordinates hopper zero and then specifically we need to replace it so it gets rid of the items inside of it uh, we're going to get a chain command block here conditional make sure it is conditional then pop that in there so that will reset now every time we throw in two emeralds. So if I throw that in, as you can see, it's not actually in there because it got reset. Then we need to spawn a redstone block um, in or in front of the uh, this these command blocks over here relative to the armor stand. So this one here is for the apple. So we need to spawn the apple over here and we can use the armor stand here so we want to spawn the command the redstone block here and that is relative um, to this armor stand here uh, three blocks in the X direction here so one two three so again we're going to be using an execute command here so let's just copy this first one here so we don't have to type it out as much another chain conditional pop that in there then let's get rid of this test for blocks command 
and change this to set block and then relative coordinates then in this instance it was three blocks in the x direction then we're going to set it to a minecraft redstone underscore block we're going to copy that press done then we need to set it straight after to an air block so again conditional and then just change paste in the coordinate uh, that last command then change it to air and then you'll notice now whenever we pop in two emeralds here we will actually get our item and this here is actually the end of the the uh, tutorial there's no more to do now so let's go ahead let's try the stick here so throw uh, pop in an emerald there we got 16 sticks and then this one here with 10 logs pop in that and then we got our 64 logs how cool is that so that is going to end of this tutorial today guys hopefully you have learned how to create the uh, vending machine using command blocks if you enjoyed this make sure you go ahead press that like button if you have any if you have any ideas for command block tutorials let me know down in the comments because I'll definitely read them and subscribe if you want to keep up to date with all my latest uh, tutorials and such and uh, I'll see you guys later bye bye